Hey everyone, Path here. And in this video, I want to discuss a couple of different solutions to the wave equation, which looks like this. We'll briefly look at what this equation means, what methods could be used to solve it, and of course, what it actually means to solve this equation. So if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. So first things first, there are actually a few different kinds of wave equation that describe different kinds of waves. But this one is most commonly known as the wave equation because it is used most commonly and describes lots of different kinds of classical waves, such as the ones you see when you pluck a guitar string or drop a pebble in a pond. And it even describes electromagnetic waves as they travel through space and time. Now let's look at what each of these symbols mean in order to understand this relationship between the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side. First things first, let's set up the idea that we're trying to study waves as they travel along this direction, the x direction, as time passes. T in our equation is time. This quantity, u, gives us the displacement of the stuff through which the wave is traveling. So for example, if we're looking at a wave traveling along a guitar string, then U represents how far away the metal making up the string moves when we pluck it. We study how this changes over time and at different points in the X direction. Now it's worth me noting a couple of things here. Firstly, we're only going to study the behavior of a wave in a single direction, the X direction, to keep things simple. We could, if we wanted to, extend this to more dimensions and then study 2D and 3D waves, but that becomes more complicated. Secondly, if you want a full detailed breakdown of what the wave equation represents, then check out this video I made on it a while ago. Right now, we'll just look at the basics here. Okay, coming back to the wave equation then, this quantity, C, represents the speed with which the wave moves. And finally, these quantities, dtu by dx squared and d2u by dt squared, represent what are known as second order partial derivatives with respect to x and t. Here's what that means. If we start with a function u, which essentially tells us about the shape of the wave through space and in time, then we can find out something about how quickly the wave changes both through space and time. For example, if we consider a snapshot of the wave at one moment in time, then we could see how quickly it is changing over the x direction. The value here is maximum, and then it takes this distance for the value of u to become zero. This is a rough indicator of how quickly the wave changes. But an even better indicator is to find the gradient of the wave at each point. The gradient is given by du by dx and it shows just what we mentioned, how quickly the value of u is changing as the x value changes. Then we can find the gradient of that function, which ends up being d2u by dx squared. This is the term that we see in our original wave equation. We can do something similar by looking at how the wave changes over time. To do this, instead of considering a snapshot of the wave at one point in time, we can now think about how the wave changes at one point in space let's say this point here. And if we plot a graph of how u changes over time, then we can find du by dt and d2u by dt squared. Now the wave equation dictates that the types of waves it is trying to describe, classical waves, must have a u function such that d2u by dx squared and d2u by dt squared are related in this way. And this is what we need to know to understand what we mean by solving the wave equation all classical waves must behave like this, and solutions to this equation can be found in the form u is equal to something, where each possible u represents a different allowed wave, as long as u fits this equation. In this video, I want to look at some of the solutions to the wave equation, but how do we actually go about finding mathematical solutions in the first place? The answer is, in general, a bit of physics intuition and a lot of tedious algebra. I'll link some really good videos and resources in the description if you want to find out the full mathematical process, or feel free to pause the video here and look through what I've done. We've already seen what one solution looks like though, a wave that is sinusoidal, that is sine wave shaped, in both the spatial dimension and over time. Technically, its mathematical form looks like this. 
and we can have lots of other waves that have the same basic form but with different amplitudes, phases, frequencies, and we can even have waves traveling the other way. These are all solutions to the wave equation. Now, rather interestingly, the wave equation is linear, meaning if we know any two solutions to the wave equation, then a simple sum of the two solutions must also be a solution. This concept is known as the principle of superposition because two or more allowed waves superposed together must also be an allowed solution to the wave equation. More on this idea in the video up here. But this is how we can analyze much more complicated waves by breaking them down into much simpler waves that we know are indeed solutions to the wave equation. A really good example of this is if we think about a wave traveling to the right and then another wave that is almost identical, same amplitude, same frequency, and so on, but it's going the other way along the same line. When these waves meet, we essentially take their U values at each point in space and time and add them up to figure out what we will actually end up seeing, the resultant wave. And in this particular scenario, the end result is what's known as a standing wave. The wave seems to not be traveling in any direction. This standing wave is another solution to the wave equation because it's made up of two solutions added together. As we've mentioned already, there are other allowed solutions that are not just simple sinusoids. One way to construct them is to add different types of sine waves, which are the basic building block solutions of the wave equation. For example, this wave here is formed of two different sinusoids, but it's clearly not a simple sinusoid anymore and even more weird and wacky shaped waves can be broken down into different sinusoids, which means that they are also allowed solutions of the wave equation. And finally, it's worth me mentioning the most boring solution to the wave equation, u is equal to zero. This represents a region of space and time where a wave doesn't exist. And this rather trivially satisfies the wave equation. The gradient of the zero function is zero, and the gradient of that is also zero, both over time and in space. Thus, our equation becomes zero is equal to zero, which is mathematically correct, even if it is a bit dull. But the reason I bring this up is because the wave equation is meant to be our scientific model for describing waves in our universe. And if our model happened to tell us that u is equal to zero was not allowed or it didn't work, then that would be indicating to us that waves should be found everywhere and every when. We would never be able to find a region of space or time where a wave doesn't exist. And this would obviously have been a problem, meaning our model would not be an accurate representation of our universe and would have to be thrown out of the window. Luckily though, u is equal to zero, the most boring solution is indeed an allowed solution. And our model seems to work here. And with that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content if you enjoyed this video. Check out my merch linked in the description below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. And finally, I'd like to thank my Giga patrons and all of my other patrons over on Patreon. Again, link to that is in the description below if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching as always and for your support, and I will see you very soon.